I moved on because I couldn't, I was like constantly not able to get that focal point right. So I moved on to this one. And of course this, the lighting is completely different. Yeah, same deal, focal point. I was fighting this thing. I was fighting it. But you see how much I changed composition in a short span of time. So if I'm using a tripod, which I started out using the tripod, it just got on my nerves because it's like you want, I want to tweak things, rotate a little bit. And, and just my mind is constantly jumping, 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 jumping. I can try this, try this, try this, try this. And so more times than not, I take the camera off the tripod and it's like, you know what? I just, I'm going to figure out what to lean the camera on, holding my breath, trying to keep everything still, um, kicking up the shutter speed. So the shutter speed is not as slow but also still letting enough light in that I can capture the shot that I want. This is pretty close. You know what I think with this? I'm probably going to cut this into a square, like cut this top part off and just focus on this part down here. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Now, see, this is the acrylic panel and then it drops off to the black fabric. I like that part, but it's, I just feel like this information up here, I don't need it because my eye is just going down, um, right to this section. And I think I can, yeah. Cause I cleaned the acrylic panel, um, before I started, uh, I started the podcast. <sighs> I want to play up on this, on this reflection, get more of that in the shot, but keep that angle. So if I push the flower back to maybe here, the edge of it here, then I would get more of that reflection, right? And then keep the acrylic panel cutting across. So it's like some of it's black fabric and then some of it's the acrylic with the reflection i think that would go good together and maybe tweak the angle um tweak the angle possibly to get more reflection in the shot that's that's a possibility that's a possibility yeah so i'm 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 not gonna keep this one probably but i want to improve on this particular idea Gosh, I let me see something with this because here's my the focus up here, right? This is what's closest to the camera. So if you leave your like if you just go auto automatic um, and you're using your focal points more times than not the camera is going to choose whatever is closest to the glass closest to the camera lens so with this particular shot is these these little red things up here i don't know what they're called right so if you don't want the camera to focus on this more than everything else you're going to have to change your focal point to someplace else right but if you leave it up to the camera the camera is going to whatever's Whatever it picks up that's closest to it, that's what it's going to put the focal point on. And if you keep doing that with all your work, it just seems boring. You just get, <laughs> you just, it just becomes predictable. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to try something different. So something that's the, whatever is the closest to the camera, it can be blurry or have a soft focus on it. Um, but then the main focus can be something behind it. Or something in the mid ground, like mid ground to background. Uh, so just changing, keeping that depth, right? But changing where that focal point lands uh, is 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 really important because it just gives your work like more variation. 
less less predictable now the black again that's the fabric um you can buy fabric everywhere like you can go like i i think i got this at walmart um the fabric they got all kinds um gosh what i was i think i was in michael's they have different kinds of fabric like different kinds like all kinds of stuff and i think uh they have like really thick stuff leather all kinds so for me it's like okay if i'm gonna continue to shoot still life with the studio lighting i should try different um fabrics and just buy it by the square foot so that would add something different uh to my work This is a more interesting angle. Um, yeah, see, that's why I didn't want that angle because it's too predictable. This is more upside down the way this is. Okay, so what what did I do? here what did I do with this because it got dark really fast okay so this is a 30th of a second aperture is at 5.6 which is pretty shallow but not the most shallow you can get um, this is a fourth A fourth of a second. If you have your shutter open for a full second, use a tripod. <laughs> put put your camera, or if you don't have a tripod, sit your camera on something, lean it on something so it's not moving for that second because having your shutter open that long, the wind blows the you you kind of bump the table or whatever it's whatever you're focused on it's going to have some blur to it that's interesting see now there's clearly the focal points here in the foreground. This is nice. I don't know what I feel about this green stem, but yeah, that's was that forty four sixty seven. Yeah, I kept trying to get this overhead shot. And again, a little bit of a placement, like a different, uh, I got closer, different angle, slightly. But I was trying to figure out, do I like this reflection? Because that's the actual studio light in the shot. It's reflecting off of the acrylic panel. And that's the other thing about the acrylic panels. Even today, it was like, if I try to shoot directly overhead, I'm going to see myself in the shot. And I I was like, you know what? I don't want to go post-production or in editing and, and have to take myself out of the frame. Um, I didn't want to fight with that. So I was trying to stay out of the shot as much as possible. But um, I like this one. This is one is very clean. Even though this composition seems more interesting, I have to get the, the feel of it right. Like this one's okay. This is closer than the other two. Um, yeah, so this is me looking. I, I, I see it like the, the gist of what I'm going for, but it's, I'm looking at my, 
the the LCD screen on the camera and I'm like, yeah, the, the composition is still not right. So I'm searching for the the right, just right composition. Do I change the focal point, camera angle? If I showed it through light reflecting or not, I'm just going through all these questions. And again, if I had the camera on the tripod, all these minor adjustments, it just takes me longer <laughs> to get through them. Um, this one's okay. You know what? This is really nice. You see this up in the corner? That's the studio light. And then this is the acrylic panel down here. You got this studio light. So I'm like, do I want that in the shot? I can take it out. Um, down here is probably going to give me a hard time on this edge. But I can definitely take this out. But it's like, do I want that? Or... Because in, instead of fine art, like a fine art style, it's going to be a more of a contemporary art style for sure. For sure. Um, I like that. Yeah, see, I moved a little bit. Now, listen, you see this? These three. Let me just put them up on the screen together huge difference right huge difference now like this it looks like the same shot but you go one at a time you see a little rotation and that one's off so I would say this one or this one the only thing about this I think it's too much light right here Cause that's my eye just drops instead of looking here my focus is here and probably here because this this is a huge light coming in here so it just like oh man do i want to go more contemporary with this or do i want to go slightly more fine art with this because now i can get rid of this light up here and the focus is more on the flower itself and not so much connected to what's surrounding it. Um, uh, to be honest, I love this one. Now, normally I don't want the studio light actually in the shot, but it works. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. It's like, if it works, I'm like, okay. Um, this one, even though I like this part here, it's coming off a little bit flat. Um, I, I like the feel of that. I, I, I like the feel of this one. Now, as far as focal point, my focal point isn't, isn't even up here. My focal point is right there. That, that's my focal. So you basically have that straight line going all the way across. So like this is in focus, this is more in focus, but then just in front of that on this part, that's out of focus for sure. But if you just take that plane and you go straight across at that depth, everything on that depth is going to be in focus, right? So you got a little bit of this, you got a little bit of this over here that's more in focus, but then everything behind it, everything in front of it, it starts falling out of focus. And so that's why I was saying earlier that you really have to be careful shooting macro because that focus fall off happens so fast. It's like really abrupt. It's like you're in focus, it's sharp, and then it just falls off the cliff, um, which is awesome when you get the shot right, <laughs> when the focal point is right where you want it to be. But when you miss, it's like you can miss a lot. Um, some, well, not some, there's a lot of photographers. They do the focus stacking where they, 
basically they definitely use a tripod for sure and they change the focal point gradually they change the focal point so they'll start with the first shot putting the focus here in front and then they'll keep moving the focus back right and they'll keep moving it back keep moving it back keep moving it back they'll combine all those shots together with the different focal points and then the entire thing is clearly in focus now for me i like the focus fall off going into that soft blur because it's more finessed right um when everything is in focus it just it just looks too harsh for me like everything is just like whoa. it's just hyper <laughs> it's hyper sharpness so i was like no i i just i like i like the fall off i like that slight the the like just gradual focus fall off um but again like i said it's it's hard to control it all right so i'm going to label that what am i up to now 14 all right uh hold on let me move this screen up here and you guys can't see my second screen but it's up here above me Let me move this. I think I can move it. There we go. All right. Okay. So. That one's. Ah. Uh, Composition's good. I will say that. Focal point is, I want to say here. Yeah, on this plane. Because I think this and this is pretty close. So on that particular plane, everything's in focus. Everything in front and behind is out of focus. Of course, this one, you can see more of that reflection, more of the studio light um it's just it doesn't pop as much as this one so if anything i could keep it but kick those highlights up for sure kick the highlights up but composition is is solid for this and then i like this point down here how it it touches the edge without looking weird <laughs> You know, like, okay. Oh, wow. I can go either one, but see, like this one jumps at me for a different reason though. Cause I like how this is at the edge. This is at the edge. This one goes off. So it's kind of like the flower is more like jumping out at you um highlights are low like down here in the reflection i would i would like to see a little bit more of that for sure but see now i can probably go shopping for a white acrylic panel tomorrow well not tomorrow Hi. Man. What 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 do you guys think? This this is um I I think the highlights. If I kick the highlights up a little bit for sure. This is uh this is pretty, I, I love the composition. Oh gosh. Um, okay, so the acrylic panel, I bought it at, was it Lowe's or Home Depot? It was one of them. It was Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, it's just a 12 by 12 inch uh, black acrylic panel. So again, I have 
the black fabric down here. This is the acrylic panel, which you get these lines, right? So this one's more of a combination of both. Um, I believe it is. I believe it is. Unless that shadow is just cutting off the reflection so much. But yeah, you can definitely see the edge of the panel up here. That's not bad. I don't know. That's weird. This now it feels like you're falling. <laughs> it feels like it feels like you're falling. Still falling. Uh, it's normal. OK, because the other thing, too, is like I don't want to just take a photograph of a flower. Right, because we've got photographs of flowers all over the place. People will go out into their yard. You got photographs of flowers. I want to turn it into a fine art photographed piece, right? So it ha it, it just can't look like I, I grabbed my kit, my camera phone, went out into my yard and took a picture of, of a flower growing it, growing in the garden, which is fine, but it's like, that's not what I'm going for. So as far as composition goes, the lighting, um, shadows, depth of field, all that type of stuff, like really boost up the quality of it. Um, and yes, it is taking a lot of, a lot of photographs, a lot of pictures. So you got a lot of captures. I don't know about this one. I'm on the fence with this one. I don't know. Let me see what I do. Yeah. See, I tried again. See this, the composition is not as good. Because now this is falling on the thirds right here. And then this is coming over, right? This one is too centered. Like it's falling on that direct center line. So now the composition looks awkward, right? So that's why I'm saying, that's why I was saying before, if you're, especially if you're a beginner photographer, um, and you want to show your work in galleries, publications, whatever. It's like learning those basic rules um, to know what catches a person's eye. And then, like I said before, you can break them. Or um, if it doesn't work as a broken rule, you can just use the rule and get a get better shots. Um, but this is basically like see the third portion of this photograph you have where your eye really goes like the weight of it and then everything kind of trails this way right so you don't have to have everything just static on those uh on that grid um you can of course have stuff breaking out from it but where does the viewer's eye fall right so again it's around here for something that's landscape here, here, and then you have a point here, a point here. Now, of course, this probably has software where I can actually turn the grid on, but I really don't do that. So I don't know how to, where that would be, but I'm assuming that, um, there's a, an option or a feature for that. This is how you lock the grid. That's what I'm looking for. But yeah, the on off switch, I don't know where that is. Cause me, I, <laughs> I, I, I eyeball it. Like, I don't know. It's like, I've been, I've been taking photographs since 2008. Um, like officially, like actually trying to be a really good photographer since then. Um, so, yeah, I'm just so used to looking at, OK, when it's right and when it's off, um, I can just tell because I've taken so many photographs. Um, but yeah, so I would say this is off again. It's too much in the center, especially this part here. This is better. And then this isn't flat, like coming straight across. It's more at, a, at an angle going out this way. Uh, 
Um, this is so close. But see, this this is the rule of thirds working the other way. So there's your line right around here. Which means that this part would have to kick over a little bit more. Now, of course, you don't want to cut this off by kicking this over. So you'll probably rotate the camera so that this probably shoots this way, which is going to pull this base over to this point. Right. So right now it's like almost there, but it's a little bit skewed. That's the other thing, too. So once you understand that putting that base on the thirds is just going to make the photo look better then you don't waste a whole bunch of shots trying to find how to compose it because you know what makes the photograph look good, right? So even if you miss it, you reshoot, you know exactly what you're going for. You're just thinking, okay, keep everything the same, right? As far as the angle, but you want to pull this base over towards that, that point where the rule of thirds intersect on, on this point here. So again, portrait, you got this point, this point, this is a point, this is a point, right? Um, from the earlier captures, I figured out that the stuff that falls on this side, I don't know why I don't like them, but I don't. So I'm, I'm either trying to go for this point here or putting a base on this point here, focal point. Um, other than that, this is close. So I'm going to tag this one. But this is more like a reshoot and see if I can get this again. Um, and then I have to remember that this is the end of the panel, the acrylic panel up here. So probably have some of the black fabric in the shot more. Um, and maybe down here, add a little bit of reflection from the acrylic panel, of course, without seeing myself in the shot so that's going to be a little a little tricky this feels like it's a little bit better but again you see how this base is all the way over it's got to be over more here um can i break the rule of course <laughs> you know what i mean like if you have a bunch of shots that you have them all in the third you're using a rule of thirds for all of them you can kind of break the monotony and just be like, you know what? This can break it. This can break it. This can break the rule, right? Um, as long as the composition is not too clunky or too far off where it needs to be, you can definitely, definitely break the rule. Gosh, I like this one. Um, I'm trying to figure out camera position because it's a little odd so here's the reflection down here a little bit of the reflection from the acrylic uh i might be standing like right up, almost above it but it's kind of difficult to tell i don't know i like this one this one completely breaks the rule like it goes even further off because you see how this one's off to the side this one's not as much off to the side. It's almost there. This particular shot, it's like, you know what? Take the base all the way off. And now where does your focus go? It's dead center to here. And I'm like, that's fine. I, I like it. So now my attention completely went away from where this base was. My attention goes here and then secondary here, right? Then this, you have the soft light kind of reflecting off of the acrylic. That's like a nice kind of a spotlight coming down. That's what it, it looks like, like a spotlight is coming um, on onto it. I like that. I was not expecting to, <laughs> to get that shot. Um, but yeah, I, and probably what happened to yesterday is I was getting frustrated trying to get the right composition for this. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep going off. Like pushing the flower off the composition, off the frame. 
and see if that works. Because a lot of times I'll try something and then I'll like and I'll be like, OK, when I upload this to the computer, I'm going to see if this actually works. <laughs> And I'll just keep going to the next shot. It's like, oh, let me try something to see if this works because uh, more times than not, I don't look at my camera monitor after each shot. I'm just looking through the viewfinder and I'm thinking maybe this will work, maybe this will work. And it's just slightly moving the camera, changing the angle, that type of thing. I'll go from landscape to portrait to back to landscape and angles in between it's just like and again that's why i don't put my camera on the tripod because it's just like my mind is just going um trying things right so i like this one i i think this is one of the better shots that i have huh interesting uh It's out of focus. I would like the focus to be here still. The way it was on this one here. With if like with this angle, the focus would have to be here. Um for this particular one, I'm not crazy about this cutoff right here on the panel. It's distracting. But yeah, this one's the, the focus is too soft. That's better. Uh, but this center is centered across like this. It's like you're cutting the photograph in half. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, typically I don't like doing that. Um, having stuff like right in the dead center. It just, it's, it's, it's not great. Now for this one, I think it works because of the angle. And I'm looking at the center line being this way instead of going straight across. Um, but on this particular shot, yeah, the, the it's going straight across. It's like, eh, no, uh, I don't like that one. Now, this one is better, um, probably because it's more in focus. And it's kicked off a little bit. Yeah, that's more center. This is a little bit more off center. That helps. It's not great, but it's more in focus. This is more in focus and that helps. It's gosh. Um, it's close. Man, it's close. It's close. I don't, I don't know. I feel like this over here, all like the, the lighter area here, the reflection, I feel like I don't need this. So I don't know if I'm going to crop that off, but I'm thinking that's going to look odd. Hmm. I don't know. Let me try to rotate it and see if that what that does. Uh, yeah, same thing. It's like I, this part up here is throwing me. I love this down here. But this part up here is throwing me off. And again, this is the soft light reflecting off of the, the acrylic. And thankfully, I'm not in the shot at this angle. I don't see myself in the shot. But yeah, my like, here's the flower. Here's where my camera is. It's like right on it. So, um, yeah, you, you just like, of course, you're you have a subject on something that's very reflective. Just be careful not seeing yourself or the camera or both in the shot, um, unless that's what you're going for. But golly, um, no. And again, now my focus is on this side. It just looks completely off with the composition. Um, I don't know why that angle doesn't work over there, but for me, I'd be like, mm -hmm. same thing. My focus is on this side. 
and it just looks blah, right? As composition's off. So back to the original, focuses back on this side um, to the left, and then it shoots out that way. I, I'm thinking that I want the angle to go up about 10 degrees maybe so that it comes from here and probably goes up this way a little bit more. Um, probably take this cutoff angle and maybe bring it down here. Maybe have, probably have this stay here, right? Angle it up and have this red go over where the acrylic cuts off. So have the acrylic cut off probably like this and have this break over it onto the black fabric. I think that would look really nice. That's an idea. Now, the flower that I used for this yesterday is already, it's gone. I can't get it back. It's, it whittled away um, this morning. So I'm gonna have to try a different flower. I have two left. One, the one of them that I have left it's just puffed like a balloon. Um, Cause as the flowers started whittling away, I took them out of the vase. And so now there's enough water in it that it's only a few flowers are feeding off the water in the vase. So now it's like the flowers that are left, they're really getting into bloom. Um, they're, they're probably gonna look different. This one, like it's, flowers they all have their own personality um so the ones that are left are not gonna look like like this this is kind of in bloom but then you have this piece this piece they're kind of starting to 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 drag or to fall to wilt a little bit but they're still pretty healthy looking um but when they start to droop a little bit the next thing you know it can be within a few hours they'll start to brown the, the yellow starts turning brown and it starts withering up and everything is like, oh no, I lost another one. So yeah, um, they will not last a full week. Uh, you, you really have to buy them and within a few days, uh, photograph them, <laughs> photograph. So that's why I was saying in the beginning, um, in the beginning, like buy them when they're not fully in bloom. So it'll take a day or two for them to really start to, to blossom. Um, so that gives you more time to work with, um, work with them. Oh, wow. I like this. Yeah, it, it breaks the rule, but I like how weird this is because look at where the focal point the focal point is here then it falls off for the most part you have this weird angle here like this is really weird um but it absolutely works now why this works i'm not entirely sure why but this particular plane like this plane the depth right there straight down that's in focus like this part's in focus, but then this halfway point back on this pedal, that starts dropping out of focus. So, yeah, that's really interesting. And it's weird because then this is like in focus, but then this is out because I'm thinking that it's pushing forward in front of this part. So yeah, that plane where your focus lands with the macro lens, it's very small. It's tiny. <laughs> it's really tiny. Um, so I'm going to go blue with this one. That one. Let me go blue. Okay. And I'm going to give that a five. I definitely like that with the stars. Uh, rotate. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, because see, that doesn't work. Definitely does not work. And that's boring. So, yeah. That, that's, that's good. That is really good. Man, I like that.
I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming. That's like the second one that it was like, oh, that works. I didn't think uh, about photograph. The I, what was I thinking? Oh, because because I was see how I'm pushing this off of the of this as far as composition. It's like the earlier shots. I had more of the flower in 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 the screen, you know, in the shot, and then I started kicking the flower by <laughs> kicking the flower off the screen. It's like kicking more of the flower off the composition to see what it would look like. And like I said before, I just wasn't sure. But I would say this one, I'm probably going to give that a five star and that one. But see, the thing is, too, again, if I turn this vertical, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. But then this one is vertical or portrait landscape. That's perfect. So <laughs> you're you you really do have to be intentional about where you're going to go portrait landscape, something in between, which just definitely looks like it's an in between shot. Um, your camera, especially if you're in between at a weird angle, it's just going to arbitrarily decide whether it's going to save it as a portrait or a landscape shot. And you're going to have to rotate it and see what works. But there is nothing official <laughs> about whether it's going to be either one. So you just you just figure it out. Um, but for me, when I'm photographing, I intentionally turn the camera a portrait or a landscape because there's a certain type of angle or composition that I'm going for. Um, this isn't bad. It's not as good as this one, but. That's not bad. That's not bad. How many more of these do I have? Okay, I'm going I'm going to go back to the the violet petals. Um the other thing too is like when you go blue, like everything's in blue. This is all like you click the blue over here. This is all the stuff that you picked. You're going to have to decide which shots you're going to keep because you don't want, even if you're making a series, especially if you're making a series, you don't want captures that are too similar to each other, um, which is weird for me to say because my water series, people come like it was on exhibit um, in Jacksonville Beach one year and walking into the exhibit people were like there's just water everywhere but then when they actually got to each image and really looked at all the detail they're all different but if you're standing back you know across the room and you're coming into the space you're thinking this dude took one shot and just put the same shot everywhere it's like no just you walk up to it and every single shot was different now there's a couple of them that are like weirdly similar but they don't work in the same space and so it's like you just you just have to look at everything like I would look at everything down here in the yellow especially the stuff that looks like weirdly similar and I would just say you know what you gotta you have to pick one you, you have to pick one which one do you want to share because you can't, especially these two, oh my gosh. You can't have, I, I don't think you can have both. Unless I would have, I guess the only way I could do that is have one limited edition and then one open edition. I think that's the only way I would do that. Because I'm marketing to two different, um, income brackets, at least two different income brackets, right? So the limited edition prints are for one income bracket, one target audience, the open edition prints are for a different audience, even though everyone can buy, you know, limited or open, right? 
but that's that's my thinking when I'm capturing um, images is okay this one I like it so much this is limited this one is pretty darn good but I want to have new work for collectors in the lower income brackets right so that's what this one would probably be um yeah so I, I I think that's my thinking going into it but again it's like I would have to have a reasoning behind having two shots that are really similar like this the crazy thing is even though these shots are similar they feel completely different to me this one is a lot of flair this is this is like the swag edition <laughs> This one is, um, this one is more finesse, more low key. I'm going to increase the highlights on it. The lighting just kick that up a little bit. So it's not so flat. Um, but it's more toned down in that, in that, that would, that will work better because if I kick the lighting up too much is that's not going to work. This one works with the lighting up this high. Yeah, that, that works. They both work, though. Okay, so... I'm getting to the end of the yellow flower. Alright, so that's where I ended up. Or where I left off. This one... Yeah, that's what I was doing. I was kicking the flower out of the composition even more like the, the yellow petals. And I was looking at, OK, what would happen or what would this look like if I focus more on just the stem? And just add a little bit of yellow breaking into the black. So I would I would say this works. But this one, no, it's it's too like, eh. It's not enough. It's not enough going on in here. Um, yeah, it's just not enough going on. This one. Again, the subject or the focal point is over here. For some reason, I'm just not I don't like it. On that side of. The the image. I don't know why. I don't know because I can't think of a rule in photography that's saying that your focal point can't be on the right side of the <laughs> of, of of the shot I don't I don't remember a rule like that I don't remember anything like that right so yeah I don't know but see now my focal point my focus goes more to the left side of the image and it's like oh I like that better so I don't I don't know about that one this is okay um i can see where my focal point is down here my sharpness everything is here everything else falls off that's fine um i just uh, i would definitely like this up here to be darker right and i think i have a shot like this already Yeah, I, I think I'm going to pass on this one. It's not terrible. I also think that I would prefer the focal point a little bit more in here. Um, as far as the how the flower is laid out like this, that's nice. But then it's like every like the other elements, I don't think it works as much as I want it to work. What do, what do you what do you guys think? You guys think this one works? It's got it's got potential. For sure. And when I took this one and I looked at the screen, I was like, OK, so I tried it there. That's probably too centered. And then there's my softbox or umbrella uh, 
it's, it's showing up in here. Now this can be cut out, right? But I think I want to keep it there. Um, like keep this part, but kind of take that little white triangle out. That's definitely an option. about this one it's too low yeah the flower is too low compared to that one's higher that one's low I like that I will tag that one blue Yeah, it's not it's not bad. It's just the only thing that really bothers me is that this is cut off. That that the top of that stem that's just black, it's cut off. And that I, it's like my eye is just going right to it. And it's like, no, you cut it off. Um this one you can see it. And it's like, okay, I'm I'm happy with where that is. The next one is like I cut it off. And I'm like uh not so much it's not terrible it's just i don't know that bothers me and of course i've been cutting off the petals quite a bit but um i don't know for some reason that one i i don't i don't like it as much that is you know what i love this part down here but it's upside down <laughs> i like this area over here like if it was just that by itself, um, I probably would take all of this away and maybe square it up, like make it a perfect square, like a 40 by 40 inch and just cut it off right there and see what that looks like. That's possible. Uh, not bad, actually. Okay, and again, this is what I was trying to stay away from. This looks like I put the flower in a vase and I photographed it. And and it just it just looks too predictable. Because when we go out walking around and we see flowers, this is really what they look like. So I'm trying it's like as far as composition goes, I'm trying to alter that um for sure like make it more interesting so now it feels like the flower is falling but it's still straight up and down <laughs> because of how because really these stems gravity is just pulling them down right um but because of how the compositions turned or how my camera angle was, it looks like they're coming straight up. So, yeah. And actually, I think they are. Yeah, because I took the flower out of the vase and I laid it down on the acrylic panel. I don't think I got any reflection in this one from the acrylic, but for sure. It's weird because now I'm liking this part over here, but this particular shot doesn't have that. And now I'm looking over here in the corner and it looks a little empty. That happened with a, a photograph earlier where I caught a little bit of the light box and it's like I liked it there. Um, but see, I cut this off. So I like this part, but I need this part like down like a half an inch <laughs> oh my goodness yeah see now it's down and I have a little bit over here but now it's just the composition is just a little wonky I don't know mm -mm, that's not gonna work uh this is the reflection that I was talking about but you really can't tell that it's there um 
So yeah, after I saw this, like, yeah, it's starting to look plain. So I jumped back to this one. I think that's, this is where I started, right? Yeah. How many shots did I take between last night and today? Um, a little over 170, over 170 shots. So that's not bad. When I first started um, photography, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of shots I captured and I got burned out because you're just sitting at the computer screen going through all this stuff and not really understanding well I didn't at that point not really understanding what made a photograph good what made the photograph okay what made the photograph bad it's like I didn't really didn't understand it. It was just I I was getting good shots, but I didn't know why they were good. I was getting shots that were okay, didn't know why they were just okay. And then there were shots that were bad that I was just like, oh man, I missed that one completely, right? And then as I kept going, you know, on this journey, then I started understanding, okay, this is what makes it good, makes it okay, makes it bad, right? Which means that when I start a new project, I don't need 600, 700, 800 photographs to put on the computer and sift through them all. I don't need that, right? Now, do I still get, you know, um, oh, hi everybody, this first time coming into uh, the chat. I'm just going, <laughs> I'm still going over, um, the the photography I shot over the past couple of days so now when I look at something like this this does not work why first of all it's a little bit out of focus it's soft focus there is no focal point where does where does your eye go maybe over here but it doesn't really fall your eye doesn't fall on anything right it's kind of just roaming through this area which is why when I have shots like this where does your eye go boom right there it's like just and not really thinking about it just when you look at something where does what draws your attention first second third right so it's like a hierarchy of things so what pops out pops out at you for me it's that red color and then my focus is there it's just like boom there it is now what second I probably see where my highlights are in here that's second what's third then I start seeing a little bit of detail in here or a little bit of light coming through in here and then you start going through all this little stuff in the shadows and the background you start looking at that third so in order for your photography not to look flat, that's what you need. You need to know where your eye falls first and then you need to have your photograph go in layers. Well, at least that's how I photograph things. Now, some photographers, um, they intentionally capture flat work for certain subjects, right? I've tried that, it doesn't work very well for me. I like more depth in dimension and I guess more dramatic, um, I would say. And it, and it kind of makes the viewer feel like they can jump into the image when you have those, that type of depth, um, or layers to your work. Um, and again, you really do that with depth of field, right? Because you go... Focus is here, right? And then all of a sudden you have your fall off starts there. And the next thing you know, this is really blurry, right? So you go to from really blurry to more of a soft focus to in focus, right? So that also helps with 
creating depth in your work. This is the end of part two of a four part series for this first lesson about composition basics. Thank you for listening.